Hi everyone, and welcome to today's event. I'm Yulia from Expression. Before we begin, let me just briefly tell you who we at Expression are. We at Expression are a team of people passionate about helping others create better experiences. We have an online customer journey mapping platform where you can build data-rich and design-quality journey maps and make your personas come alive, and do that all with your teammates in real time. Our consultant team conducts public and corporate workshops to educate companies and individuals. We've also got Expression Academy that has interactive courses on mapping personas and interviews. And of course, our free community events. Today, we'll be talking about improving developer experience with story mapping. The shared understanding of the project is a key to achieving goals and setting them up realistically, coming up with better ideas, prioritizing, and making the right product decisions. Our today's expert will show you how to use remote story mapping to align with the team to do it all. He's a community builder and prototyper with more than 11 years of experience, and also has been speaking, writing about rapid prototyping tools, running, and facilitating workshops. He's currently a product manager at Contentful. So without further ado, welcome everyone, Anil Kumar. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about my personal experience with the uh, developer experience I did improved with the uh, user story mapping. So just to give you a, a couple of introduction, um, I'm a technical product manager currently at uh, Contentful. I have a strong developer experience. Uh, I work as my initial career times as a developer. And um, I worked at these companies at, I'm currently a technical product manager at Contentful. And I worked at a bunch of companies like SAP, Sapian, Commerce Tools, and most of the companies are like either they're product companies or other consulting companies. So I've seen the both the worlds of the product and consulting. And as Yulia mentioned, I have run like in the last five years, more than 100 events, mainly uh, product prototyping events in Berlin, and also helped mentor mentoring speakers, like more than 100 speakers, preparing for the talk uh, to the meetup and conference. And apart from that, I also do a mentoring. Uh, I'm a mentor at Career Foundry, uh, helping graduates and career switchers uh, to land their dream job uh, as a UX or a front-end uh, developer. And uh, the topic I'm talking today, uh, the story mapping, I had an opportunity to do a story mapping with uh, Jeff Patton, um, who's a, uh, author of uh, user story mapping. And uh, I met him in like in the 2017 Berlin and I had a great opportunity to have a story mapping with him and got a great learning from him. Uh, so enough, enough of me and uh, I would like to keep this session interactive. I would like to know um, a little bit intro from you all like, hey, uh, what's your role? And what do you wanna take out from this session? Uh, you can write, write me in the chat. Um, so let, let's keep this session interactive. Feel free, feel free to uh, write it on the uh, Zoom chat. I would like to know about your role and uh, uh, where are you connecting from? Don't feel shy, feel free to write it. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from Berlin, Germany. Great, I see already a couple of them, senior UX designer, Lispa, Berlin, product manager, UX researcher. Yeah, that's great. Central America, Brazil, wow. This is great. We have, we have, we have a really wide, wide, worldwide audience. So that's great. So it's, 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 it's actually a good evening, good afternoon, good morning. So that's great. Um, thank you, thank you for that. And uh, keep 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 adding. So I would like to keep this interactive. Um, so in a nutshell, in a nutshell, those who already know, um, uh, for those who don't know, for me, I look at story mapping as a very simple way. We got a user journey. Uh, the user, our target user, uses our product and it gets to some place. For example, you can think of any digital product you use, right? It can be Google Maps. Uh, he uses, it goes from point A to point B uh, to get his job done. So he takes some path. 
And at a product, a team which is, who is responsible for building that product has set of priorities. Uh, like they can do, they can build a lot of features, they can build a lot of ideas. And it's a product team's perspective and it's product team's job to prioritize and find out a way which is the best path for the, our target user. And I'm gonna talk about uh, more on this, but uh, to, 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 to make it simple, like think about user journey as kind of a then between these uh, green uh, boxes, like user takes first step, then second step and third step to reach his goal. And whereas a product team is more like a R block, like what about if this, what about if not this? So thinking of R option, like uh, what if we can skip that? What if we can able to do the other option? So it's more like a, this product team has more like a R and, and op, uh, options. And for a user, it's more about then. So taking some next action. With that, I'm, again, I'm gonna uh, talk more details about the story mapping um, and what's the different perspectives on it. And this is, this is my first story mapping I did uh, when I was working as a consultant uh, at a company called Bitgrip, uh, building an e-commerce application for a pump manufacturer uh, called KSB. They're one of the well-known pump manufacturers. It's called KSB.com. So we were helping building the e-commerce solution for them. So as I joined as a new team member, I mapped out this together with the product owner to understand what's the pain point for the target users and what is the problem we are trying to solve? What are the big wins? The reason is it helps us to take a better decision. Hey, this is the most pain point. We are purpose of this is to solve that. And we can do some of the tasks later and we can, uh, so it really helps us to make a better decision on the what features to focus on first. And I do story mapping also at my private uh, projects. And I do a lot of story mapping at home. So my, the, the picture you see is like my son is taking the stickies, what I did. And also he's also doing the story mapping uh, on his wall. So you could imagine that I pretty much use the story mapping uh, for most of the things about how to approach and how we can have a better way of doing the things. And this is also one more example from my son. Uh, we did it together uh, in, this, uh, in this COVID time. I kind of scheduled him like what he has to do. Uh, and I kind of mapped him his daily routine. And do, do, you, have, do you have any example? Uh, have you built a story mapping for your private projects or have you built for your company? Uh, th those, who are, those who have answered, uh, you build some projects. Uh, uh, question is, have you, have you used story mapping at your company or your projects or you have you used in your uh, uh, private projects? This is a question, uh, feel free to answer me in the chat. Yeah, there, there is a, I think the question is from Jane. Uh, yes, I'm gonna talk about uh, how journey map is different from story mapping. Cool. Nice, nice. I see that some of the cases. It's the definition of a new product. That's great. I started with from my career change as a UI designer. That's great. And, and okay, yeah. Uh, so so the, so the example I'm going to talk today is um, with my previous organization. Uh, I, I used to work at Commerce Tools, and uh, uh, the last month I started as a technical product manager at Contentful. So there I was working with a team called Shield, where we, I applied the story mapping technique and how we helped to build a product on time and prioritize. So if you don't know what Commerce Tools is, Commerce Tools is a headless commerce platform helping any companies who wanna build uh, e-commerce solutions like Amazon or Zalando 
uh, commerce tools provide a tools required for to build such a great uh, a scaling enterprise commerce application. And of course, you have a storefront where you make a purchase. For example, one of the customer of commerce tools is Lego. Uh, so if you open any Lego website and if you ever purchased anything on the Lego uh, website, uh, the e-commerce solution is uh, based on commerce tools. And the part I was responsible for the team was uh, a front end extensibility for the merchant center. Merchant center is a back end application where it's used mainly by the, the partners and customers of commerce tools. It's not a user facing application, but it's like a more a business user facing application. And um, this is important uh, because I would like to show you that we don't have a single user. We have a couple of users. So this is a business user. The business user is basically updating the price of the product, updating the product description um, of the product. So they are basically using this merchant center user interface to update the basic business uh, product data. And on top of this merchant center, a developer can build an application uh, just like an app. You can think like an app on the, your mobile device, like right? On the, on the web app, we provide a platform where developers can build apps on top of it. And there's also one more user who is admin, whose job is to maintain the roles and permissions, who has a right access, who has a limited access. So controlling that. And um, the problem we had was um, how can we enhance, how can we listen to all of these users? How can we build a great experience uh, for all these um, users in mind? and uh, provide them a great experience. And if you, if, you, if you don't know, this interface is like the merchant center looks like this. Merchant center user interface looks like this. And we wanted to make some kind of a life easier for, life easier for admin. He had a tedious task of updating uh, a user interface at several different places, for example, in this merchant center, imagine you got an e-commerce application for a, each country, for each country, uh, for Germany, France, or think about any country, you have a, each project for each country e-commerce solution. Uh, the admin has to update uh, if we, some changes are happening on the custom application, he has to update in all the places. So it was a tedious task and we tried to solve that task by thinking more on a technical side, thinking from a user perspective, thinking from a business perspective, how we can benefit for it. And the problem we had was we were, uh, the team I was, I joined, they already missed a couple of deadlines, the quarter, uh, the quarter deadlines, the quarterly goals. And the, the reason, one of the reason was uh, the product is complex and Every time the team tries to work on, they were coming up with some unknown spots during middle of the product development, which were ended up being like, hey, we cannot deliver this. We find out uh, that this part of the product is not clear. We need some dependency with other teams. And that's why we were not able to deliver on time. So we need one more quarter to work on. So it happened a couple of times. And other big other other reason was uh, it's a kind of a newly formed team, a UX designer, product manager, and the newly joined developers were missing the big picture, the clarity of what has to be done. There were like the challenges we had. And I will come to this um, journey map and story map. But before that, I would like to ask you that. What do, you, what do you think? What do you think could be the root cause for these missing deadlines? Uh, it, it can be from your experience, uh, from your project experience. Feel free to write on the chat. Would like to learn from you as well. Yes, underestimating the scope of the work. That's good. Poorly managed time. Cognitive overload, poor communication, miscommunication. Yes, yes, oh, that's a good point. Lack of clarification on deliverables, that's a nice point. Competing needs, 
lack of alignment, unclear requirements. Yes, yes, yes. Great, great. Um, yeah, I think I, I can I can I can only say that I can align I can agree with uh, most of the the points uh, in the chat. Yes, not everyone was involved from the start. That's also a good point. Dependencies, nice. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, so just before before uh, before we jump into story map, I would like to talk about journey map, and I'm talking about the customer journey map. Again, I don't want I don't want to give you what a journey map is about, but again, I can quickly say what journey map is about. It's about, it's a problem space. It's a map you do to understand the journey and you understand the pain points. So it's a problem space. And journey map is about what's happening now. What's happening now with your current product? What's happening? What's the pain point with your current uh, users where they're struggling? And it's a tool, journey map is a great tool to identify your pain points. And it just looks like a current view and usually Usually you have, most of the time, journey map has a single user. So you take your target user and you kind of map out what his journey looks like currently and what are the known areas and problems we can improve. So when I say improve, um, it's, it can be only three possibilities. Uh, either your product is really super delightful, great experience, that's good. You're doing a good, great job. And if your product is okay, or if your product, if, if the end user is really kind of struggling, th these, are, these are the areas which clearly indicates that there needs to be improvement. And in my opinion, a journey map is a good input to your story map because you get your customer, you understand your customer pain points better, you understand your customer frustration better, and you know what all those, those jobs to be done for those customer and you get a better clarity. So definitely I would prefer to do a journey map or uh, get to know about your customer information, our uh, customer struggle. And I think, I think you can use any digital whiteboarding tools or you can also use a UX Prisha for that. So that's a, that's a great tool to use that. And have you have, uh, just again, the question, have you used a customer journey map? Uh, question to the audience. What, what's your take on it? Does it make sense what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Looks like no, no. Oh, yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Iris. Um, yeah. Uh, so we can, we can move on to the next part. Um, so some some of some of the some of the some of the things I would like to share with you, as I'm working on a digital space, as I said at Commerce Tools, what what are the things I used uh, in order to uncover uh, uncover uh, to do uh, to get to know the pain points? Yes, you can do the pain, you can do the customer journey map, but you need to do some research. You need to have some data, right? Um, for that, uh, what I did is I did some kind of. A, some steps I took to get those data to understand the pain points. First thing I did was doing a pair programming with uh, our target developers. And I walked through what's their day to day looks like and how they are doing today. And most of the time, it's a great opportunity uh, to do this um, pair programming virtually and know their, how, what are the tricks they're using, how they're solving the problem today. and and you can record those session and you can also share with your team and you can back, hey, this is what the current pain point is. And look at, I did a pair programming with a couple of de developers and they're all spending the same problem. So that's the best way to have a, have a shared understanding with the team. So just before you are doing this uh, customer journey map, so kind of mapping that out. And other, other things which I really learned um, is, input from customer facing teams. Uh, Commerce Tools as a product company, they have a customer support, they have a professional service and solution engineers and customer success managers. 
they always interact with the, the customers and they have a great insights and great struggle, great input um, to what we are uh, building. And having a good relationship with them, talking to them frequently and kind of brainstorming together with them. Hey, this is a problem we are trying to solve. And I got a lot of input from them. Hey, this is a struggle. There was a documentation is missing. Hey, you can make this documentation better. This is where the struggling's are. And uh, Commerce Tools has a lot of open source tools. So the other source of information for us was GitHub issues. And a lot of developers were consuming the platform and giving us feedback through opening an issue. That's also a great opportunity to engage with our target audience and work with them and understand their pain points. And other tip I would like to give you is like dog fooding. And I'm coming from a strong developer background and I myself use the product. I myself use the product and I kind of figured out that where's the pain points are. And I also talked to other internal developers who are using the product and got the information about what are the pain points. So using our own product is a great idea also to feel the pain as to get, get, to get a better idea for how this, our customer journey looks like and what all the pain points are. And there's, a, there's a something called as a friction locks. Uh, this, is, this is a term, term, I'm getting it from Stripe, um, the payment integration company, uh, the payment APIs. Um, so anybody joins a Stripe team, uh, an engineer uh, team. Uh, so the first couple of months, they have to write, spit out all the frictions they had in a document. Uh, what are the pain points? Whether documentation is missing? Are you searching some Google to find out the solution? Um, so spinning out this also shows that you have a pain points with your product. So that's also a great source of information for you or a signal for you to understand the customer insight and helps you to build a great customer journey. Now let's move to the story map. Uh, uh, the story map is in a solution space. Once you have your journey map with all your pain points, with your target user, in the story map, you, you are planning to kind of figure it out your solution, uh, trying to find out the best solution. And story map is the best for, you wanna, you are, you're visualizing your world to be greater world. A world is a better place. Using your product, how the, your customer world can be better. So it's kind of more like an imaginative tool, um, how you can think about uh, how you can solve that problem. And story mapping is a, a, it's a, it's a tool to find alternative solution. And it's a future view. It's about viewing what's, what's possible with future. And, and, and the other important thing is story map can contain multiple users. So when I say a multiple users, in the case of commerce tools, we had an admin, we had a developer, we had a business users. And the touch points are many. And whereas in customer journey, you just have one single user and you talk about at a time. But story mapping, you have multiple users can be. And also with story map, you can have multiple paths. You can have multiple edge cases. You can talk that, uh, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna go and give an example on that. Um, so a story mapping is a great tool uh, to whatever the ideas you suggested, the problems you suggested um, for the misalignment, skipping the deadline um, was, it helps us to have a bigger picture. It helps us to have a bigger picture about the product with everybody. Okay, so what actions I took, um, yes, after skipping car, uh, not able to deliver on time, what actions I took as a starting point was each of the developer team, each of our team members started telling stories. I'm talking about story. We started telling a story based on our observation from those customer journey, from those insights. We started sharing on a remote a virtual call. We just talked about story. Hey, our org admin, this is the pain point. Hey, for everybody had a chance to write it on a sticky note and we collected them on a remote story mapping session and everybody got an opportunity to express what their pain points are, like what they think 
as a pain point for our customer. And it really helped us to understand, uh, we figured out that each of us, a designer, a product designer, uh, including me, product manager, including the subject matter expert, the architect, and the newly joined developers, everybody had a different view on the target user. So that was that was the first eye-opener for us. Everybody thought a different views and different insights. And we talked about and we challenged about it. Hey, why you think that was a great idea? Why you think that's a pain for that user? Uh, what was the problem on it? What's the context on it? So we kind of challenged each other and we kind of came to kind of one kind of agreement, uh, one kind of a shared understanding. Hey, uh, this is the target audience for us. And we kind of scoped it to the developers and also our guardians. And that's our target users. And we noticed that the onboarding of the developers was not great. And we wanted to focus on that onboarding great experience so that we can increase the adoption of the custom application platform. So um, what, what, what really helped us was also with story mapping this way. We had one subject matter expert who was there at the company for a longer time. And that knowledge of his experience was only on his mind. And with the story mapping, he kind of shared all his contacts, all his interactions with customers. That was a great insight for all the designers, including me as a product manager. And we were able to provide better ideas and better thoughts. And um, other thing we identified while doing this story mapping is having a, we kind of, the journey, if you start writing your story mapping, uh, we kind of figured out that there are multiple users involved, whereas internal application developer, uh, org admin, and the business users. So we kind of, with, with using our persona, with using our frustrations, summarized frustrations and motivations, we were able to make a call. We were able to make a decision quickly. And we were also, Sometime we were going too deep into the topic while, while writing the user story mapping. And there are some areas we had to spend a lot of time. Uh, for example, this is called example mapping. How, do, do you, anybody, uh, have you heard of uh, example mapping or is it something completely new to you? Um, I can explain you more details. Um, please uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, okay. Okay, so I think that's a, that's a good hint, a uh, good signal for me. So you can think of example mapping, uh, example mapping is kind of an extension of a story map. You may ask, hey, uh, I, I write a story map. I, I kind of have a story. I know the, uh, I know, I know, I know the paths of the user, but what, what example map talks about is more, uh, more on a concrete, more on a detail of, Okay, you pick that uh, story, you pick that topic. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say one of the, in the journey, one of the user journey, you picked as a topic as um, on the e-commerce journey, like, hey, a payment process, payment process, uh, processing a payment. Uh, that could be a, your story and uh, your rules can be like, hey, uh, should you attract, the rules could be only credit cards are supported, master and visa credit cards are supported. And a rule can be, it can be from PayPal. And talking about different examples and talking about different edge cases. And for me, the most important thing from this example mapping is questions. If team doesn't know something, they also write down the question as some kind of an unknown spot. That's the biggest thing for me. Like, hey, uh, it's about what we know and what we don't know. So these questions became our action items for the sprint. And we communicated clearly that, hey, we hit a block and we don't know uh, this. We have to still figure it out. We have to talk to some other team. We have to find out a way. So this example mapping opened up for us, ask a lot of questions. Think about narrow down your story map, narrow down your story map. Think about how, how if I start implementing this one particular story, what are things I need to consider and what we know and what we don't know. And also thinking about the real use cases, like, hey, what, what can go wrong? What can, 
users can do what's the happy path looks like what's the what's the bad like edge cases look like should we cover here should we not cover here uh, it's more like a kind of a magnifying lens looking into deep uh, on the, your story map taking one piece of story map and asking yourself a lot of questions and finding out unknowns it, it worked out really well for us and um, with that we were able to take further actions actionable items and clarify things in a better way and other thing other thing which which really helped us um, to, to 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 view as a story map uh, think story map like is your google maps right so we thought finding alternatives we used story map is a kind of a way to find out alternative way for example on a, on your google maps and if you're in a hurry and if you if you if you can't take public transportation for some important meeting you might go a uh, public transportation if you if you skip public transportation you might take a taxi or you might find some other alternative ways which is quite faster or depending on your situation um, or if it's like a good nice weather and you want to enjoy or you, you might also go for a bike ride right so you you change the direction you make the decision based on you still you want to reach the same destination but you choose the path in a different way based on the context similarly similarly using the story map uh, our, our developer were able to choose the multiple solutions uh, easy solutions they figured out a better solution and one, one of the biggest biggest uh, moment for us was our experienced developer experienced developer who's, who said is gonna is, is gonna require uh, two three months for implementation it's a huge effort with story mapping he said, I'm going to get that in one day because we can do this alternative way, which still gives the same result for our target users. That was the biggest moment. That was the biggest moment for me uh, when developer never thought of an alternative solution. So that's why I can highly recommend uh, develop to do the story mapping together with your team, uh, especially the, the, the team who is involved in delivery uh, of the proposed solution. So they can always think about alternative ways uh, to build this product. And, and as I talked already in the example mapping, it also helped us to find out and point out some unknown spots and also helped us to scope it. Hey, this is something edge case. We will not cover this now. And we're going to cover in the later part of the release. So it also helped us to prioritize if it's really important if it's an edge case we want to cover and it made us to clear uh, scope and i also think story mapping is a clarification tool and with that what i mean by clarification tool is um, i use story mapping to align with internal product teams uh, the product team i was working on had some dependencies with the uh, team uh, with, with the team I'm working for and we mapped it together and with that with alternative solutions I kind of give them hey you could live with this for three months instead of blocking the team and also clarifying why it's not possible at this moment and showing the big picture where we are heading to and where we are now kind of help them to achieve the shared understanding so you can think and you can use the story map as a clarification tool. And it's also a tool for new ideas. And while I, while I was doing uh, story mapping with other product managers, and I was talking about the struggle, I was telling a story of struggle of our target users. They came up with all great ideas. Hey, you could reach out to that user. Uh, I had an interview with them. They had a nice insight. Say you could reach out to salespeople. They also had the same issues. Uh, please talk to them. They have a better ideas. And by while doing this remote story mapping, I also got a lot of new ideas, uh, which I, I couldn't have thought by just doing it alone. So with that, uh, I really uh, I really think that story mapping is a great tool for shared understanding with all this getting new ideas or clarify, clarifying thoughts. And as a result, 
like if you if you're if you're wondering hey what happened what happened at missed deadlines uh, the result was we identified the known spots and we identified the dependencies and we predicted our quarterly goal and we were able to do release the feature on time or even before scheduled uh, internally internally that was kind of a success for us uh, so that really at the end everybody felt happy as a team and we were kind of uh, able to plan the next iterations uh, more successfully so in a in a nutshell using our remote story mapping aligning we were able to deliver the feature what we promised in the quarterly goals on time and some of my key take, key takeaways from remote story mapping is um moderator the importance of a moderator i started i started um with our team uh, without any moderator and time to time i felt like we were running out of time because sometimes we tell a story and we we miss we go out of the context so it's it's a great idea to have a moderator your scrum master or any um non team member to be a moderator observer just to keep us in time just to kind of uh, uh inform us if we are going out of the uh topic uh, so that really helps and uh other thing which really um important is you cannot run one day this in the virtual remote story mapping session you cannot done it in all one day so what really worked for us was having a lot of small sessions like a small sessions like i did uh, four for two hour session with our team to get a complete big picture on the topic i was working for so that really works on and also the moderator can also help you to summarize hey these are all the topics you identified these are all the topics are uh, to do these are the topics you um, known spots like unknown spots and these are the topics you would like to continue discussing on it in the next meeting so on an average like on an one week we were able to have a big complete picture uh, with my team and uh, as i said it's 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 highly highly recommended that you do a multiple small sessions don't run uh in a in a big big one day story mapping session virtually it doesn't it's it's not, it's not going to work on and my other benefit of virtual or remote story mapping session is i could link the prototypes from designers i could link the real screens uh from the from the mockups which designers have built uh so we could able to talk about it and we were able to update the story map and and we were i i was able to tell a story hey this is the story our target user is this is the interface he's in and this is a struggle point and it was making perfect sense for everybody to follow and it was quite easy to just a screenshots and present it to the team and with that with that we also increased the prototyping and also screen sharing the shared understanding with the team like our developers were prototyping some concepts and presenting to us in the daily uh, hey this is what i think this is a nice solution from technically and this is from the customer point of view uh, this could be a problem uh, th that was that was kind of a that was kind of a thing it increased uh, a kind of a shared understanding with the team okay i'm i'm going to get get to that um questions uh but yeah it, it this is this is this is a picture from jeff patton um so it really it really helped us uh the story mapping remote story mapping it really helped us to get a common shared understanding uh when we were before we had a totally different views each one have had a different views after using that remote story mapping session and uh we were able to get these common shared understanding and it's really important that it's ongoing it's not only once it has to be ongoing and that daily stand up uh, our developers were sharing screens and talking about the story and also our designers were talking about what designs they built and giving feedback and talking continually talking on it continually discussing continuously telling a story hey this is our target users this is what the pain point we are solving on it and referencing them in our remote story map really helped us to stay aligned with um, the goal 
uh, of shared understanding. And um, and other 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 biggest uh, biggest learning for me is um, if you have heard the term MVP, minimum viable product, um, from the lean startup or from the startup uh, ecosystem. Um, what I understood is your MVP doesn't have to be something to the users. Your MVP can be your internal release only for your team. Yeah, and you, you can you can set your expectations that hey, we know that we're not going to release it to the users, and we know that we're going to just see the technical feasibility. So that way, you have a less commitment to the outside world, and you can experiment and you can learn from it. And that really helped us uh, in terms of launching our whatever the product internally uh, with our beta users internally. Um, so setting expectations um, was, was really really uh, helped us a lot. And my 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 final final learning uh, my last learning is um, never copy frameworks. Th this is this is my biggest learning. Uh, I try to attempt. Uh, you 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 might see you might see I'm talking today, or you might see some YouTube videos on great frameworks, great product uh, frameworks working. The problem is they're talking their context, and your context and your problem is totally different than them. So what I what I say is try to try to ask yourself um, what works best for your your situation because um, people hate big changes and one of the biggest challenge I had was changing people mindset. I can I can show you great examples, uh, story mapping, uh, great new uh, frameworks, new product frameworks, but question is. Can you influence your team to adapt to that? Most of the time, it's really hard. It takes time to build a trust. It takes time. You have to understand the, the context of the problem you're solving. And you also have to see which of those framework parts of the framework can really benefit for your project. So my, my, my final advice is take, take my takeaways from this talk also, challenge yourself. Uh, do, uh, don't apply blindly. Uh, what I suggest, think about it, uh, challenge yourself. What, 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 is the, what is the one small thing you can change at your work uh, today or tomorrow uh, from this talk? Talk about it. It can be um, one small shared understanding you can improve. Uh, could be sharing screen while presenting on a daily standup, uh, sharing some screens of our design, talking about it. T take small, small step at a time and build a trust with the team um, that, re that really helped, helped me to um, kind of gain confidence with the team and uh, go in the direction. With that, um, what, what are some of the books which really I can recommend you to read? Um, or you can also watch talks of these authors. Uh, definitely the user story mapping from Jeff Patton, uh, Outcomes or Output by Jeff. And Don't Make Me Think. Uh, it's also a great book on um, on the usability. And now I'm open for questions. And if you uh, wanted to stay in touch with me, uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Happy to connect on LinkedIn. Happy to talk uh, about story mapping, developer experience. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also reach out to me on my email. Thank you. So, yeah, Anil, thank you so much for a great presentation. The last book title you mentioned, Don't Make Me Think. I do believe that you just made everyone think. And I'm so happy to see that people are really relating to the things you mentioned. So that's super, super cool. Thank you so much. Um, and with that, yeah, we actually have a couple of questions for the Q&A. And let's start with the one from Stephanie here. How does the smaller sessions work with the devs when you are running its sprints? Is that not disruptive? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Well, for us, uh, for us in the in the sprint time, we have kind of a backlog refinement, kind of a meeting, backlog refinement meeting of a slot in a week, like uh, two sessions we had, like one hour, one hour session on. If I remember correct, it's on Monday and Wednesday, we had two hours of session. And we simply said, we're not going to run that. And we're going to use that two hour session on that, um, 
understanding the bigger picture. And that's why that way we were able to use that refinement time uh, in the story mapping time. But that's a good question. It's it's uh, it, it's it was definitely a disruptive, but uh, we had to make some adjustment because that was more higher priority for us, and um, it, it worked well for us. And again, again, that's also again uh, that that also brings me a point that you don't have to do what Scrum says the, the same same the way it is. Again, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not against Scrum, but I I, re, I respect and I work with Scrum. But what I'm saying that is adapt, be adaptive mindset. That's what Agile says. Be adaptive. Um, don't just follow the rules uh, as it is. Adapt what works best for your team. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie. I hope that really helps. Uh, we have another question from Oliver here. Uh, what guidelines can you suggest for creating a framework for the smaller sessions? Um, that's a good question. Uh, okay, let me think about it. Um, yeah, uh, for me, what, what really worked out very well was um, first, have a clear, clear set agenda. Expect clear, clear set of agenda in terms of like, hey, what are you going to do in these two hours? And be, be, be honest and open that, hey, for the first session, we are, first time we are trying out and we don't know what we're going to do have a rough agenda well, that's what i had like uh, i kind of had only like 15 minutes for brainstorming or 15 to 20 minutes for brainstorming the user about users but we actually took like 45 minutes um, to understand the pain points we were talking to each other um, yeah starting starting with kind of a rough agenda and do you already have enough customer insights do you have enough frustration points already um, that could be one. I'm, I'm, I'm talking from a story mapping perspective. Uh, if, if, you, if you don't have any uh, much customer insights, I would say try to get it or try to get it at least closer. Uh, what's your persona or users you're, you're working on? And, um, and also well, the other, other best way is um, also list on the top questions you have. Like, hey, this is something unknown. This is what we skipped. Uh, this space is very unclear for us. Uh, this part of the area of the product workflow is not clear for us. I would like to tackle these things. Um, so uh, with, 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 a, with the whiteboard digital tools, um, you can already share that screen uh, that with, with your team. And also ask the team if they have any suggestions or better way to do it, if they know anything. Uh, so I would just typically prepare just like how you prepare for your meetings, uh, just, just, just prepare for it. And just also have more like a retrospective, like a small retro just before you end the session, just see what works well, what didn't work well. And for example, like that, I said, right, moderator, we were, we were, we were running out of time always. And I wish I had a moderator who could stop us from going discussions beyond the scope. Great, thank you so much. Really helpful guidelines. I hope Oliver that answers your question as well. We have another one from Stephanie. Who is meant to help story map? Your agile teams that execute on the need devs or is it more your business teams that determine strategic direction? Uh, I, th I think it's both. Um, I think it's both because um, for me, I need to get a buy-in from my stakeholder. I need to give them, I need to give them the why it's the best idea to work on. And I need to show them, hey, this is a pain point we are trying to solve. By solving this customer pain point, this is what the business is gonna benefit. It's gonna create more trust to the team. It's gonna have a more adoption. That's what we are aiming for. Um, so to, to explain them the outcome we wanna achieve. Uh, so definitely I'm gonna use that uh, to kind of also visualize myself from a strategically, uh, that's the step you wanna take. Uh, so the other, other way of thinking story map is like, it's an opportunity map. What's the opportunity for us? So that way it relates with your business. Uh, for me, you, you can tell a story from a user perspective. Hey, that's a struggle we have and using our product, their life gonna be, our user's life gonna be super awesome. How? This is the journey looks like. And that way you can 
challenge or you can give more information to your stakeholder and also think about what's the cost involved. Hey, if you, if you want to develop this, uh, developers might take two sprints or three sprints. We have to hire new developers. Uh, it also gives you the cost involved. Um, you can think of business perspective. Definitely, it helps you from that angle. And also, you can think in terms of discovery, right? Product discovery. And this is the unknown spot you have. You identified some unknown spot. You're not sure. You're not sure if your user is, uh, why user is taking that action. That also kind of a good indication that you have to do more product discovery. You need to do more research. You need to talk to more users. Um, that's also a good input for your uh, product discovery. And there's also a lot of good articles uh, by Jeff Patton on talking about dual track development. He talks about how you can run the product discovery and also your uh, solution in parallel. And other, other, other benefit is definitely uh, for agile teams in terms of delivery. Uh, you know that your roadblocks, you know your uh, scope of the project. And I, I would use it for both, both for research, both for your discovery and also both for your delivery. Daniel, thank you so much. Uh, we have another question from Bruna here. How can we convince the stakeholders to apply a collaborating story mapping at a top-down company? Maybe you have any tips? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I have to admit that one of the biggest challenges is not about framework. It's about influencing people. And I'm talking about influencing. I'm talking about um, understand, apply your empathy to the stakeholders. Uh, you have a knowledge, you know the benefit of story mapping, or you know the benefit of customer journey mapping, but your company executives or stakeholders might not know uh, the benefit of it. Uh, it's a knowledge gap, right? And their perspectives are quite different. So I would first spend, be more empathetic to them, understand what they value most. Uh, by having conversations with them, by looking into their, the way they approach the problem, um, telling stories from what they understand. And that's, that works, worked for me, but, but I have to admit that it's not gonna happen in one meeting. It's gonna take time. It's kind of a transformation. Uh, it's, it's gonna take time. So you can be only an influencer. Uh, other, other better things you can talk about is uh, introducing a culture of learning, educate your team, educate your, um, your stakeholders. Um, like there are a lot of lot of initiatives you can take lunch and learn. Um, also look for other other peers you have who can support you in terms of this idea of story mapping or things. Right, you you, you first try to get a buy in from your uh, colleagues, uh, from your architects. Uh, talk about the benefits. Talk about why why it's uh, it's uh, uh, this way is good. What why they think. Try to analyze. Try to critique yourself. That that kind of gives you uh, good 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 information. My other other tip. My other tip uh, is like I already mentioned in the talk. You don't have to start story mapping from tomorrow. What I say is, you can take one one takeaway from this topic. Try to apply a small change with your team. Small change, um, and try to do it incremental. Try to educate them. Keep educating them. Uh, small changes, that's what works for me, uh, that's what worked for me, instead of asking for a big change, the way we work. I tried in the past, I have to admit that I failed. Uh, pe people hate doing big changes. I hope it helps you, but I'm happy to talk more if you have more questions. That's an interesting question. Yeah, thank you so much for so many great tips, and uh, we will send the link to Anil's LinkedIn. Uh, right now so you can connect as well uh another question from aris here how do you prioritize stories features across different projects if there is too much work how do you quantify business value oh that's a typical product manager question yeah so for me first thing i would i would look uh, from a from a ceo from a from a company perspective where we are heading to uh, kind of a North Star metrics. Um, it can be for me at my previous role, or I want to increase the adoption. 
uh, on, on a bigger picture, the vision, I'm talking about the vision, adoption of the adoption of the our developer platform. So I would definitely see which has more value uh, or which has more need uh, as a more struggling need, which has more opportunities. Definitely gonna do some kind of analysis uh, why one has more impact. Um, you can use several prioritization frameworks. For example, RICE uh, framework, like you can see impact to your business, uh, how hard it is to implement, how complex, um, uh, how, how much is the impact for that feature we're building, how much exp expensive it is to build, right? Um, you can use uh, a lot of these frameworks to kind of, to all of your projects and you see, hey, this has more impact, but it takes a lot of effort. We don't, we, we can't offer it now. Or we can, you can see some spots like which has a good impact, but it just requires two weeks to implement. Uh, I think then I would pick that which has more impact and which is easy to implement fast. So it's, it's, it's a typically using some prioritization framework. So the one I follow is, um, is a RICE method, like impact um, uh, and, uh, and how expensive it is uh, for, the, for the development team to implement and impact to the company, impact to the customers and how confident you are. Another important thing is how confident are you? Is it a problem? Is it just a signal from one support? Uh, how confident are you? This is a problem which is gonna, which is gonna really bring value to the company. The more confident you are, I think it's better, better, better you can make a decision. If you're not confident, I come with some crazy idea tomorrow. I think uh, that, that's, that's a confidence of very low. It's just my opinion. Uh, so one, something you have a confidence high is something you have seen in the data, something you have seen, a lot of hundreds of customers are asking for that same feature, same request, or we are dropping off sales because of that missing feature, uh, what we can do on it. So that's kind of a confidence, right? So, you know, that's just areas we had to work on. I hope uh, it helped give you some thoughts on it.